Hey class, Mr. Sethi here. Today we're going to be talking about how to find the volume of certain objects. Volume basically tells us how much we can fit inside a three-dimensional space. Have you ever wondered how much liquid can fit in that water bottle of yours? Or how small that space is inside your iPhone? The same questions can be asked of different shapes and objects we see every single day. Whether it be the space inside the sticky notes that are on my desk, the space contained within this Nerf ball, or our geometry textbook. How about the fire, st fire extinguisher you see in the hallway? Or this random crate I found in the copy room? Or this stack of printer paper? or even the small chopstick I keep in my pocket. We can be the curious about the volume of all these different shapes. Don't worry guys, you are not alone. The man standing right behind me is named Bonaventura Cavalieri. Cavalieri was an Italian mathematician who lived from 1598 to 1647. He asked the same questions you guys are asking right now. Cavalieri came up with something called Cavalieri's Principle. Cavalieri's Principle states that the volumes of two objects are equal if the areas of their corresponding cross-sections are in ca all cases also equal. Now, this is a formal definition, and I can understand that formal definitions can often be quite confusing. So let's look at Cavalieri's principle from a different perspective. Looking back at that pack of paper we saw earlier in this video, how can we figure out the volume of that pack? Take a moment to brainstorm on your own. Pause the video if you need to. As a hint, think about what we know about just one individual piece of paper. Okay. Let's go ahead and list what we know about this pack of paper. Well, if we look at the image from earlier in this video, we can notice, if we zoom in, that there's some information listed on the bottom of this paper. The first piece of important information is the letter size. What the letter size means is the size of the one piece of paper. And according to this pack, one piece of paper is equal to eight and a half by 11 inches. Not only that, but this pack of paper also tells us one other extremely important piece of information. Can you find it? If you said the 500 sheets information, you are absolutely correct. We need to know these two pieces of, in, of information in order to find the volume of this pack of paper. Realizing that one piece of paper is actually a rectangle, we know that we can find the area of one piece of paper by using our area formula for a rectangle, which is the area of a rectangle equals length times width. For this piece of paper, we know that we can plug in our information, which we found from the pack of paper, and go ahead and say it's going to be 8.5 times 11. The product of these two numbers will be 93.5. And we can't forget about our units, 
which are inches. And since it's area, it's going to be inches squared. Now, the question is, how can these two pieces of information help us solve for the total volume of this pack of paper? Well, when we realize that each sheet has the area of 93.5 inches squared and that there are a total of 500 sheets in the pack, that means that when we look at our diagram down here, the total volume or the total pack is the addition of all these sheets. So in other words, we're taking 93.5 and we are adding another 93.5 and adding another 93.5. And we're going to go ahead and do the same calculation 500 times. Now, when you realize that is a lot of addition, so it is much easier for us to just say that we can take the area, which is 93.5, and multiply it by the total number of sheets, which is going to be 500. The product of these two numbers is 46,750. Now, since we're talking about volume, our units are going to be inches cubed. We can generalize Cavalieri's uh, teachings in the formula V equals BH. This stands for volume equals base times height. Now, notice how this is a capital B. When we talk about the capital B, we're actually talking about the area of the base. The base is the slice of our solid. So when we look at 1, 2, and 3, we can see that the base is the hexagon in number 1. the right triangle in number two, and in the cylinder we have in number three, it is the circle. We know that this is the base because we can go ahead and slice each one of our shapes, our solids, along this base an infinite number of times. And it will always produce that same base. And we can see the same thing in number two as well as number three. For number one, <clears throat> in order to solve this problem, we're going to use our formula volume is equal to the area of the base times our height. And for number one, this would be 16 times 4, 4 being this side right here. The result is 64. And we know our units are going to be centimeters, and since we're talking about volume, it's going to be cubed. In number two, we're given the height of the triangle as 2, which means that this side right here is going to be 2. We know that the base of the triangle is going to be 4. We can go ahead and say this side is going to be 4. And remember, the units are inches. And then the height of the prism, which means we're going to go along all the slices we made, and we know that this is going to be 7 inches. Now, in order to figure this out, we first need to find the area of the base. And we know that the base is going to be a triangle. So B, which is the area of our base, it's capital B, is going to be equal to the area of the triangle formula, which is 1 half little b 
which means the base side times the height. Plugging our information into this, we know that the result is going to be 1 half 2, or rather 4 times 2. Our result is a base area of 4 inches squared. Now, in order to find the volume of our total solid, we go ahead and take our formula V equals big B for the area of the base side times the height, which gives us 4 times the height of our prism, which is 7, and our result is going to be 28. And our units here are going to be inches cubed. Now, on number three, I'm going to get you guys started, and then you're going to finish it and bring it into class tomorrow. Here we have a diameter of the circle as four inches, I mean, sorry, four meters. And we know that the diameter goes all the way from one side of the circle to the other, crossing the center of the circle. Okay, well, we know that we need to find the area of that base, and B, in this case, is going to be a circle, and the formula of a circle is pi r squared for the area. Well, since we want a radius and not a diameter, we're going to have to take this number 4 meters, and we're going to have to use the relationship between the diameter and the radius, which is the diameter is equal to 2 times the radius, and solve for our variable. R. Once you have this radius, you should be able to plug it in to find the area of our base and then use our base in our formula V equals capital B times H. Good luck and I will see you all tomorrow.